the eyes of the world are on them, who they are, their ideology and politics, their tunnels and the missiles they are preparing in these tunnels. There are dozens of questions, including the military capacity of the Al-Qasim Brigade, the armed wing of Hamas. We will seek an answer to the question of what we know about Hamas and its armed wing, the Izzetin Al-Qasim Brigade, which was established as the armed movement of the Brotherhood in Palestine in the shadow of the conflicts that have been ongoing in the region since October 7th. I would like to share a statistic with you. Seven out of ten people who watch our videos are not yet subscribed to our channel. Our most important motivation is your messages and your unconditional support. We are looking forward to your support on our two million journey. I'm Hikmet. Here we go. The Hamas movement, which operates in the Israeli-occupied and blockaded Palestinian city of Gaza, has established good relations with Islamic countries, albeit distantly, while Western countries consider it a banned or terrorist organization. Hamas was brought to power by the Palestinian people in the elections held in 2006, but was not recognized by Western countries, especially Israel, and was ousted from the government. Founded in 1987 as the Palestinian extension of the Egypt-based Muslim Brotherhood organization Ihwan, which is considered the largest Islamic movement in the Arab Islamic world, Hamas redefined itself in its new policy document announced in 2017 as intellectually part of the Ihwan school but an independent Palestinian organization. You know the Palestine Liberation Organization, the legitimate representative of the Palestinian people in the international community, but Hamas refuses to be part of it, and yet we know that it has ruled the Gaza Strip since 2007. The armed wing of Hamas, the Iz Adin al Qassam Brigades, which was formed to prevent Israeli attacks, refuses to be associated with terrorism, and their only goal is to end the Israeli occupation of the Palestinian territories. The modest resistance against Israel's occupation of Palestine has now taken on a new dimension with the Iz al-Din al-Qassam brigades. Qassam takes its name from the Syrian-born Palestinian leader Sheikh Izzetin al-Qassam, who lost his life in the year 1935 while waging an armed struggle against British colonialism in Palestine. They announced to the world that they were the armed wing of Hamas with the first statement issued on January 1, 1992. Unlike the pre-80s Palestinian Marxist groups, the brigade's strategy is to operate only within Palestinian territory. In other words, they were at the front of the line in the Palestinian War of Liberation. Many of its commanders lost their lives in Israeli attacks. Despite this, they have adopted a growing strategy in terms of both armament and military training. In addition to this, there are stages of religious, cultural and moral training. They apply the military hierarchy almost completely. In other words, there is an army organization such as squad, platoon, company, and battalion. All of this takes place in the military academy, and there are brigades region by region. We know that it is a completely secretive organization to avoid detection by Israel, that not all members know each other, that the cells are segregated, and that even those in charge act with great secrecy in collective actions. If you look at the videos they share on social media, you can see that they have very professional teams and equipment, not only in the military field but also in publicizing it. In addition to this, many details from cybersecurity to naval commando units are finely crafted. Let's go back a little bit to look at the weapons and military equipment they have. al qasim brigades started their military work with pistols and then rifles. A threshold was crossed with locally produced automatic weapons. In addition to some explosives, they also focused on the production of bombs and remote controlled explosives and made progress in this field as well. A turning point for the region and a development that surprised Israel was the first rocket fired at a Jewish settlement in southern Israel at 2001. This rocket, known as Qasim-1, was officially introduced to the international community as the first primitive rocket capable of changing the Middle East. It was followed by a new model called Qasim Siudachi. 2. When it was used, the calendars showed February 2002. All these developments paved the way for the resistance movement that started in Gaza to spread to a wider area. The rocket capability of the resistance movement in Gaza accelerated after this period and rockets with a radius of 80 kilometers were produced. In this period, when technical studies gained weight, rockets with a range of 75 kilometers called M75 and R16 with a range of 120 kilometers emerged. Today, the al qasim brigades have in their inventory missiles with the capability and range to hit Tel Aviv. In a statement made by the military spokesman Abu Ubay, he mentioned a missile called Ayash 250. 
safety. This was a very important detail. We are currently witnessing the active use of this missile. The process that started with Qasem-1 has been replaced by missiles with high range and destructive power. It is possible to say that this is the result of more than two decades of production and accumulation. Another noteworthy product of the inventory is the unmanned aerial vehicles they produce with their own means. The Ziwari Kamikaze drone, a more advanced version of these attack and reconnaissance drones, was seen in the recent attacks on October 7th. This unit is operated by Qasem's Air Force Unit. 35 Kamikaze drones targeted Israeli positions. Ziwari's principle of operation is to destroy the target with a sudden dive from the air to the ground, named after Mohammed Ziwari, a Tunisian aeronautical engineer and member of the Al Qasem brigades. They also announced their air defense system in a video they released recently. It was stated that the air defense system named Mudaba Beer would be used against fighter jets. As you can guess, one of the major obstacles to Israel's ground offensive, which the whole world is curious about, is the tunnels. These labyrinthine tunnels, up to 70 meters deep, are used to protect the leaders of the operation and to produce the military equipment I have just mentioned. A parenthesis must also be made about the Hamas leaders who planned all this. At the top of the movement is Ismail Haniyeh. We know that he has been fighting for the Palestinian cause for over 40 years, imprisoned, exiled. He became prime minister after winning the elections in 2006. But he was dismissed because of the events between Fatah and Hamas. He did not recognize this decision and became the leader of Hamas in 2017. The leader of its military wing, the Iz ad Din al Qasim Brigade, is Mohammed Daif, a little-known figure who is responsible for the construction of the tunnels that are today the main obstacle to Israel's ability to launch a ground offensive in Gaza. Known by the nickname The Guest, there are only three photographs of Daif, and it was claimed that he was the planner and executor of the Aqsa Flood. We know that he grew up in a refugee camp, that his wife and child were killed in an Israeli attack, and that there were several assassination attempts, but he survived each time. Yahya Sinwar, the leader of Hamas in Gaza, is also a key figure and one of the masterminds of the attacks on Israel. Hamas has a uniquely complex structure. We see that more than one decision-making group has come into play with the motivation of Free Palestine, and work has been carried out in many different areas, but there is no division. Let me talk a little bit about what I think. We are witnessing perhaps the most intense and warlike escalation of the long-standing conflict between Hamas and Israel. Compared to previous years, I can say that there has been a significant improvement in Hamas's military capabilities, technical tactics and weapons inventory. On the other hand, Israel, backed by the unlimited support of Western states, continues to kill civilians and bomb settlements. At a time when the whole world is turning a blind eye to what is happening in Gaza, the main goal seems to be the expulsion of Palestinians to the desert and the annexation of the vacated areas. As as the humanitarian conditions in Gaza worsen, Egypt's responsibility increases. In this situation, the only crossing point, the Rafah border crossing, is very important. The aid coming from here needs to be made an international issue. But we are also aware that Israel is wagging its finger at Egypt and has said that the convoy will be bombed if it crosses. In this situation, Cairo could not take such an initiative, not out of choice, but to avoid tensions with Israel. It was this situation that caused the reaction of the Egyptian people. I believe that the steps taken by Turkey are quite appropriate both in terms of timing and dosage, because we have seen so far that every step taken in the region has a meaning. We will continue to see this in the future. In this context, Foreign Minister Hakan Fidan's statement that in the current conjuncture, we will either go to a bigger war or a bigger peace. Some are adding fuel to this fire. His statement shows us that regional balances are closely monitored and that Turkey is doing this very meticulously and carefully. Of course, it was not easy to build military and political structures to produce missiles and ammunition while the embargo on Gaza continued for years. While a political solution must come to the table in order to establish peace in the region, Israel's failure to respond to the steps taken in this direction is one of the important sources of motivation for armed resistance groups. In other words, they say that armed resistance is a right if there is no solution on the table. Considering that the al Qasim Brigade has been preparing for these days for many years and recruiting soldiers on a voluntary basis, its significant influence on Palestinian politics will last for many years. It is also expected to increase its leadership position in the eyes of the Palestinian people due to the Israeli attacks. Contrary to the statements of Israel and the West that we will destroy Hamas, I think that such a situation is not possible, although there is a possibility that Hamas will weaken in a short time. Hamas and the Al-Qasim brigades, which have made significant progress both militarily and politically for many years, can be an intermediary that can cause Israel to sit at the table, not an obstacle to peace. I don't expect a solution in the short term.
I can say that my greatest desire is that the Israeli attacks stop and that civilians, especially children, are not killed. If you have watched the video so far, I believe you have subscribed to GZT's YouTube channel. See you in the next video. Goodbye. We will seek an answer to the question of what we know about Hamas and its armed wing, the Azetin al Qassam Brigade, which was established as the armed movement of the Brotherhood in Palestine in the shadow of the conflicts that have been ongoing since October 7th.